Good morning, students. Welcome to the lecture of the real analysis. Uh, in the last lecture, we have studied the concept of directional derivative. We will just have a look to the concepts we have studied. This is what initially we have tried to find out the equation of a line in a three-dimensional space, where this is a uh, this is the line we want to find passing through a point P naught and parallel to the direction V bar. Therefore, the parametric equation of the line we have obtained is r bar is equal to r naught bar plus t v. These are the coordinate wise equations. Okay, this is what uh, the basic needed for us in order to write the parametric equation of a line passing through a point and in the given direction of u or v vector. Okay, then we have moved towards the definition of directional derivative. Directional derivative is the derivative obtained in a specific direction. For this, we have taken f to be a multivariable vector value function. Therefore, f is defined from s to rm, where s is a subset of rm. For this, we have taken to be s to be a subset of rm and c to be an anterior point. If c is to be an anterior point, then let us draw a line passing through c and in the direction u. And just now, uh, we have in the last lecture, we have discussed that a line passing through c parallel to uh, u is the line segment one can write as c to c plus u and any arbitrary point on this straight line is written with the help of c plus h u where h lies between 0 to 1 okay and for any h real it will be any point on the line not on the line segment if i restrict the value of h to be 0 this is the first end point of the line segment of c if i restrict the value of h to be 1 this is the second end point of the line segment and for any h real the point will be on the line passing through C and C plus U. Then the directional derivative definition goes very parallel to the first principle definition of derivative. We know the first principle definition of this derivative is given as limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. On the parallel lines here also, we have taken the increment in the function to be f of C plus h o minus f of C and Increment is due to this variable, this parameter h. Therefore, the denominator we have taken h and limit h tends to 0. Therefore, this is very similar to the first principle definition and is called as the directional derivative of the functions. Function at point c in the direction u and this is a symbol we are using. Okay. We have solved some example. I think only two, one or two example is only one example. And I have given these two examples for homework let me try uh, let me solve this third example also for the examples to be very clear to so let me solve that number three example here the function defined is f of x y is equal to x y upon x square plus y square where x not equal to zero and y not equals to zero and is defined to be zero when x is equal to y is equal to zero this is the third example, correct? And it is asked to find out f dash of 0, comma u. That is, find the derivative at origin. f dash of 0, comma u. So at origin, you want to find out the directional derivative. Now, let me write the definition first. f dash of c, comma u is limit h tends to 0, f of c plus h u. minus f of c divided by h. This is the definition. So, what is c given to here? Here, c is equal to 0, 0. Origin it is given, no? c is 0, 0. Let me write the coordinates of a vector u to be some u1, u2. Therefore, first of all, we will try to find out this ratio. We will try to put at the limit. So, let me find out what is c plus h u. Then, c plus h u will be 0, 0 plus h times u1 comma u2 which actually gives us h u1 and h u okay this is h u1 and h what is f of c plus h u minus f of c we will calculate consider f dash of let sure i calculate directly f dash of 0 comma u according to the definition this is limit h tends to 0 f of C plus H U may I write 0 plus H U minus F of 0 divided by H. 
Okay. If we write in terms of the coordinates, this is limit h tends to zero. Is it f of h u one comma h u two minus f of zero comma zero? Origin has the coordinates zero zero. Divided by h. Divided by h. What is f h u one h u two? As u to be taken a vector which is a non-zero vector. If I, how can I find out the value? Let me take this one by h outside. I thought h u one h u two is defined as the definition is x y upon x square plus y square for both the values non-zero. Therefore, here u is a vector taken to be a non-zero vector. Okay, therefore here it is. May I write this as h u one into h u two upon H square u one square plus H square u two square minus the f of zero zero. What is the f of zero zero? What is the value when x y both are zero? Is it zero? This is zero. Okay, therefore let us just simplify it. Limit H tends to zero. One H we will cancel and we remains with H u one u two divided by H square I will take common. This is u one square plus u two square. Okay, one more H will get cancelled and we will remain with limit H tends to zero u one u two divided by H into u one square plus u two square. And if I put the limit H tends to zero, what will happen? Limit do not exist. Okay, here what we will write here limit. Do not exit. It will give us the infinity value. No? If I ask the limit, do not exit. What does it mean? The function, the function has, the function do not has direction value. The function do not has directional derivative at zero zero. Okay, is the point? Is the example clear? Next, we will go to understand some important remarks. Let me write first the remark, or before that, let me write the definition of partial derivatives. Partial derivative definition we have studied. First, we'll try to understand the definition of partial derivatives. Partial derivative in case of functions of two variables we have studied, right? Keeping one constant. The same we will uh, write in terms of functions of many variables. In textbook definition we will write: Let S be an open set in R n. And f be a function from S to R. As we have discussed already, the function partial derivative is defined for the functions of many variables, but it should be a real value function. And also the fact that it treats the functions of many variable as a function of single variable at a time. If it will be a real value function, a real value function. Defined on yes, defined on yes. If x be an integral vector, let me write the coordinates x one, x two, dot dot somewhere it is x k to x n, and c is a particular point in an n-dimensional space with the coordinate c one, c two, two c k, dot dot up to c n are two points. Are two points of yes having corresponding coordinates equal? Having corresponding coordinates equal except except for kth kth. 
coordinate of both the numbers is not same that is xi is equal to ci or i not equals to k and xi or xk not equal to ck for i equals to k only the difference is there in the kth coordinate all the rest coordinates are same now we have uh, with this we can observe only the change in kth coordinate all the rest coordinates are kept constant then we consider the limit we consider the limit what the limit should be considered limit x k to c k f of x minus f of c divided by x k minus c k here if you observe the change in the independent variable rather kth coordinate change in kth coordinate only or change in kth variable okay and this is change in the function with respect to kth variable node and whenever the limit exists one can say this is the partial derivative with respect to kth variable when the limit exists it is called it is called partial derivative partial derivative of f with respect to kth coordinate or kth variable and is denoted by and is denoted by one symbol is familiar to us this is do f by do x k at the point c or this is also written as f k at the point c or this is also written as the d k f at the point c d k f at the point c okay this is what let me write very similarly i think you have studied the definition for the functions of two variables and is of the type limit uh, let this be limit do f by do x the this is limit delta x tends to zero f of x plus delta x y minus f of x y divided by delta x okay for the same is being defined for the functions of many variables is for the function of two variables here as you can observe in the numerator y is kept constant y is treated as it is y is kept as it is and the change is observed only in x coordinate therefore the denominator was taken as a change in x it is delta x and the limit delta x tends to 0. Similarly, one can write dou f by dou y as limit delta y tends to 0 f of x y plus delta y minus f of x y. What should be the denominator? It should be delta y. Change in y because here if you observe x coordinate is kept constant and y is allowed to increment therefore the change is due to the increment in y variable that's why the denominator is taken as delta y therefore these are the partial derivative of the functions of two variable here we have defined this for the functions of k variables i hope there is no difficulty in understanding let me write one small remark on this The first remark says that the definition of directional derivative is meaningful if u is equal to 0. So generally we are considering u is not equal to 0. No? So let us check what will happen if, the if that u is taken to be 0. The definition of directional derivative is meaningful if u is equal to 0. Okay, let us check what happens if you put, put u is equal to 0 in the definition. Put u is equal to 0 in the definition. Let me come to the next page. What happens? It is this is f dash of c, comma 0. This is limit h tends to 0 f of 
c plus h into 0 minus f of c divided by h. And what this is actually, limit h times f of c plus h into 0 is f of c, f of c minus f of c is divided by h and it is no doubt 0. That is f dash of c comma 0 is always 0 irrespective of the point c. Therefore, limit exists and the value is 0. As limit exists. Exist and, and dash of c comma 0 is equal to 0 for all c in the domain say yes. Okay. So this is very important to note. Why we are taking u naught equals to 0? Because for u equals to 0, the additional derivative is always 0. Okay. And uh, whenever this u... Okay, one more remark says that whenever this u in the directional derivative we were considering is, if I consider this as uk, if u is equals to uk, what is uk? This is the kth unit coordinate vector. Kth unit coordinate vector. I think all of you are familiar with the standard basis of unit vectors. No? So for this k, uk is kth vector of the unit coordinate then f dash of c comma uk is called partial derivative is called partial derivative and denoted by denoted by dkf at the point c let me try to explain this. In a three-dimensional system, we have the unit coordinate vector system along x, it is 1, 0, 0. Along z, this is 0, 0. And then this is 0, 1, 0 along x, y, and z. Okay. And this is the first vector where 1 is in the first position, rest it is 0. Uh, for the second vector, 1 is at the second place, other 0. Similarly, if we consider a n-dimensional system, then uk is the kth unit vector having 1 at kth place and rest it is 0. Then this kth unit vector goes along kth coordinate axis and therefore if I consider the partial and the directional derivative of the function at the point c in kth coordinate axis, no doubt it will be a partial derivative because we know the fact whenever we find the part, whenever we go for Finding the derivative along the coordinate axis, those becomes the partial derivative. Therefore, here also, whenever a directional derivative is taken along the kth coordinate axis, kth coordinate vector uk, that is along kth coordinate axis, then this is called as a partial derivative. Very similarly, here if I want to explain, if we consider u as equal to this 1, 0, 0. What kind of derivative it will be then? F dash of C comma U1 time being let me write. And this is nothing but the partial derivative dou n by dou x. Okay. I hope you are clear with this. Directional derivative when considered along the coordinate axis becomes the partial derivative. Because directional derivative is actually the derivative we taken along the specific direction uk and if that uk specific direction is coordinate axis then this is nothing but the partial derivative number three remark i will write if we define the vector valued function capital f to be the collection of f1 f2 up to f m and f dash if exists that is directional derivative exists at the point c in the direction u okay when we say that it exists if and only if if and only if partial derivative or directional derivative partial derivatives at k dash c comma u exist for each k for each k equals to 1 to m. For each k is equals to 1 to m. That is, one can write 
f dash of c comma u is equal to f1 dash c comma u f2 dash c comma u so on f m dash c comma u right f dash of c u exists if and only if all the derivatives of every vector every function involved here if it exists and only we can say that this is going to be exist okay or also one can say in particular when u is equal to uk we find and you we consider u is equal to uk as just now we have seen this directional de derivative becomes the partial derivative and this is a dk f at the point c and how the derivative is obtained partial derivative of every function every coordinate function dk f1 at the point c dk f2 at the point c similarly d k f m at the point c it is this dk f m at the point c this is what about the derivatives and the important remarks now we are going to understand the relation between directional derivatives and continuity because we have seen that partial derivative fails to gives the continuity and that's why the new kind of derivative is defined and is called as directional derivative okay now you see the relation between directional derivative and continuity we will see the first result under this the first result says that whenever directional derivative exists then we can say that partial derivatives exist converse need not be true if f dash of c comma u exist in every direction u then in particular in particular all partial derivatives exist in particular all partial derivatives all partial derivatives d1 f at the point c d2 f at the point c up to dn f at the point c exist this is quite but obvious why because f dash of c u gives us the deri derivative in all possible direction and whenever we consider that possible direction or the direction u to be along the coordinate axis directional derivative is going to become the partial derivative hence our directional derivative if it exists for every direction then surely partial derivative is going to exist but converse need not be true analysis not true now in order to show that converse is not true we will just take one example let us define the function as f of x y is equal to x plus y uh, if x is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0 and this is defined to be 1 otherwise otherwise means for both non zero correct na both non zero let us check the existence of partial derivative and then we will check the existence of directional derivative because the existence of directional derivative gives you the existence of partial derivative we are checking for the converse so let me find out the partial derivative d1 fx y what is d1 fx y derivative with respect to first variable let me take limit delta x tends to 0 as i have already defined this is limit, limit x uh, limit delta x tends to 0 upon x plus delta x y minus f of x comma y and this is the increment in x variable delta x for the sake of convenience let me take the point x y to be 
zero zero. That is at the zero zero, we will check the partial derivative. So that will be easier for us to understand. So this is limit delta x tends to zero. Therefore, delta x zero minus f of zero zero divided by delta x. What is the value? If one of them is non-zero, this is x plus y. Both non-zero. This is one. But here one is zero. Therefore, what the function is being defined? This is delta x plus zero, and here it is zero divided by delta x. Delta x, delta x cancel. It gives you the answer one. Limit delta x tends to zero is also one. And similarly, may let us find d two f of zero zero. What is d two f of zero zero? Limit delta y tends to zero. F of zero delta y minus f of zero zero divided by delta y. And this is again gives me. Let us calculate. Limit delta y tends to zero. This is zero plus delta y minus zero divided by delta y is equals to one. Means here one can say that both partial derivatives exist. Now it's a time to check the direction. Both partial derivatives exist. Okay. Now let us check. Let us check existence of directional derivative. Let us check the existence of directional derivative. Now, in which direction we will consider? Let me consider this in the direction u. We find to be u one, u two, not equal to zero. Okay, and at which point we will check origin? Because we have checked this at partial derivative at origin. So let me write f dash of zero comma u. Limit h tends to zero. F of zero plus h u minus f of zero divided by H. Let me write in terms of coordinates. Is it f of h u one h u two minus f of zero zero divided by h? Both the coordinates are non-zero. They have which function we will use? If both of them are non-zero, both of them is non-zero. This is one. Correct. This is one minus zero plus zero. If any one of them zero, this gives the addition x plus y. One minus zero plus zero divided by h, and this is limit h tends to zero one by h. Whether limit exists in this case? No. Therefore, limit do not exist. Limit do not exist. Hence. Directional derivative do not exist. Okay, therefore easily we can observe partial derivatives exist. But this function at point zero zero that is origin, but directional derivatives do not exist. Okay, this is what we will see for today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will try to understand whether directional derivative gives actually the continuity or not. Let me stop for today. Thank you for being with me for today's lecture. Thank you, Vanilla.